Hi, and welcome to SF Live. I'm your host, Christina Marie Flores. Well, communication is a very big problem with some people, whether it's in the workplace or perhaps in a relationship. Uh, lucky for you if that's your problem, because today we have communication expert and relationship coach, Susan Campbell. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Christina Marie. Very good. Now, now at what age did you start deciding that you wanted to get into relationship coaching and communication and that did that interest you as a child yeah well I used to um, help my parents deal with my brothers who were a little difficult at times I was the eldest child okay uh, okay so born into kind of a helping role mm -hmm. so I've, I've always been interested in helping people communicate better then so I had you parents the, uh -huh. too one was from my father was from the north my mother was from the south and in those days, those were two really different cultures. Mm -hmm. They've probably blended some now, but um, you know, I could see their communication, which was actually quite good. Uh -huh. And I saw other people's communication, other families that uh, I could see was uh, marked by dishonesty and secrecy and a fear fear of differences. And so I think. I got a jump start from having the parents that I had because they showed me that differences are no big deal. Nothing. Very, very They're not lucky. that scary. Very lucky of you. I yeah. was lucky. <laughs> Definitely. Now you have written nine books mm -hmm. on communication. What are the range? They range from dating. Truth and dating uh -huh. is one of my most recent books. Mm -hmm. uh, getting real, and um, oh, back my first book was expanding your teaching potential. So it was for teachers. Mm -hmm. Then I wrote a book for communication and business. And probably my most well-known book was in 1980. It was The Couple's Journey. Ah, yes. And that became an immediate bestseller. And it was the first relationship book that was out. It was before they had shelves in a bookstore about relationships. Mm -hmm. What in your journeys, what is the number one mistake that people make when they're having a problem communicating? I think trying to argue somebody out of their point of view is one of the mistakes. <laughs> instead, oh, of, yes. instead of just letting the difference be there and being curious about the difference and sometimes when you really listen deeply to each other the difference doesn't matter so much but when you resist the difference and you try to control the other person to think just like you then the difference becomes a real battle it becomes a power struggle how does one learn to accept the difference or to look at it you know from an angle if you, especially if you really don't agree yes how can you take that out of your position and just really look at it neutrally. How is that done? Well, there are stages of relationships and uh, in the early stage, uh, you tend to deny your differences, but, but later on in what I call the power struggle stage, you can't help but see your differences. And usually the, the real differences that make a difference are something where you've overlearned something that I've underlearned. So let's say my ex-husband learned really well how to take care of himself and I knew really well how to take care of business, you know, how to make money, how to get the job done, how to be on task. Mm -hmm. He was really good at relaxing, um, chilling, you know, all of that. So we're opposite here. That's mm -hmm. a difference. That's a difference that people often struggle about. Mm -hmm. But once you realize that exactly what that other person is, that you're criticizing is probably some undeveloped part of you. Like I hadn't developed the ability to really take care of myself mm -hmm. and nurture myself and he hadn't developed the ability well enough to be on task and to make a living. So do you find so that you a lot there's of times... a lot of those kind of differences that show up and if you if you realize that there's a deeper purpose to these differences, yeah. they're here to get you to know yourself better and a relationship is really a journey toward personal wholeness, then you're gonna be better off. So a lot of times people will connect with someone that is has a wonderful knowledge of something they should learn to develop a little bit in themselves. It's usually not so much knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, like carpentry okay. or uh, you know, reading <laughs> books about Carl Jung. It's not right, on right. that level. Mm -hmm. It's more their ability to handle certain tasks in life, certain essential tasks in life, mm -hmm. like um, coming in touch with your true feelings. Some people mm -hmm. are really good at just expressing and other people are, are often kind of suppressed. And sometimes those two types will get together. So the over-talker will get together with the under-talker. And the purpose is for the over-talker to you know, 
be less talkative, to learn to just be in the silence, and the under talker to learn that it's safe to speak out even if you don't exactly have it all together. Because a lot of under talkers are, are kind of playing it safe, mm. and over talkers ought to play it a little safer. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <know>? So <laughs> I've it's had a that, few of them on. <laughs> those kind of qualities are the ones that emerge later on to wreak havoc with relationships, unless. We learn to value those differences for what they can teach us about ourselves. So take us through the relationship stage one more time. The first stage, oh my God, they're wonderful. Yeah. Little red flag, red, oh, it's okay, it's okay. You know, they're yeah, wonderful, I right. feel great. Yes. Then the ding, 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 you know, wait a minute. Okay, that kind of bugs me. Yeah. That irritates me and those things start bubbling up and popping up. So at that point you say, instead of saying, this guy's driving me nuts, mm -hmm. you know, then, well, let me look at that. Yeah, like he seemed re really, masterful and he, kn he knew his own mind in the romance stage uh -huh. just what I need a real strong man in the power struggle stage he's dominating me he doesn't let me get a word in edgewise <laughs> you know it, it, it changes your mm -hmm. uh, your attitude you know, I mean that's a joke but it often goes that way the next stage is the stability stage mm -hmm. and that's where you learn to value these differences and learn from them the way I just said where you realize that if you're judging another person or you, you want to change something about another person mm -hmm. that you really need to look at well why do I want him to change it's so that I don't have to deal with whatever you know why do I want him to be more loving and attentive and tell me he loves me and reassure me all the time so I don't have to deal with my fears of rejection mm -hmm. well I mean yeah I don't want to have to feel rejection all the time, but maybe I have to come to terms with that. See, that's part of the growth toward wholeness. And now with those things, that feeling that you get when somebody does something that really hits that nerve, that button, yeah. as you call them, you have a wonderful quote here and it says mm -hmm. that we often need to get our buttons pushed so we can really notice what they are. Yes. Okay. Remember folks, we've all got buttons <laughs> and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. Like fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of being controlled. Those are the, those what I mean by buttons. Mm -hmm. And if we can realize, okay, I have these buttons and if you can also realize, okay, how do I know when I'm getting my button pushed? Well, a lot of times you are tongue tied or you get red in the face, or your breathing stops, or you have a deer in the headlights reaction. You know, all these different autonomic, you know, fight or flight kind of uh, reactions mm -hmm. show you that you've overreacted to something that's just a normal thing that life deals to us. Mm -hmm. And when you do overreact, comfort yourself. Know, oh, you know, I've got some unfinished business from my past around being rejected mm -hmm. or being controlled. Let's say, you know, nobody ever let me do anything without them looking over my shoulder. Well, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be attracted maybe, at least during certain stages of my journey, mm -hmm. to somebody who is a little bit controlling maybe. So I can learn to deal differently with that first, so I can learn to feel the pain around how when I was little, I never got to speak my own mind. I had two po I'm just making this up because mm -hmm. that's not my story, but uh -huh. I'm thinking of a that's particular, very popular, though, particular yeah. uh, client of mine, you know, mm -hmm. two very dominating parents and just whatever she said, it, it, you know, like it wasn't okay. She never got her own way. So now she's attracted to a man who's controlling and learning to work that out. Ah, and and you have these people that all have the buttons mm -hmm. and you notice that you keep dating the same kind of people that keep pushing these buttons and you're saying well it's his fault it's his yeah. fault it's his and finally you go wait a minute if this keeps affecting me how yeah. do you say okay so that's a button now let me look at this and really see how I can get past this how does one take that mm -hmm. experience of all these people pointing mm -hmm. the same way and say yeah. maybe it's me and how do I get rid of that button well it gets you sooner or later seeing that you're attracting the same kind of painful situation over and over mm -hmm. does get you to start looking at yourself mm -hmm. if you know if you value self-awareness and growth and what you need to do is shift your whole attitude about what a relationship is for mm -hmm. 